Okay, good evening, everybody. We will go ahead and call the Gilbert Council meeting for April 12th, 2021 to order. I would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilmember Yentes, please. I pledge allegiance. Next, I would like to please invite Lisa Henry from the Central Christian Church down for our invocation this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Vice Mayor and Council members. Uh, thank you for your service and your sacrifice to our community. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, and declare righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. So they will also be the foundation of our city. We declare that these men and women of integrity who honor you will make righteous judgments and decisions as you guide them, as we are accountable to you for the decisions and acts that we choose. We declare that you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. We pray a spirit of fear that has been poured out in our land will be uprooted and not be controlling force in our city. We pray protection over our city over our first responders, our frontline workers, and those who have placed over to govern over us. We ask that you impart courage to each one as they make difficult decisions pertaining to the governing of our city. Give them fresh revelation and ideas about how they can impact our community. I pray for any voices that have been silenced that you, Lord, would open their mouths and once again fill them. Let their voices be heard. God, we pray for special protection over our children, those preborn and those little ones that have been affected in this season, for the families, our schools, and for our youth in the border crisis. We ask for protection as we bear the image of Christ and shine the light in our community. Give each of us an extra dose of merciful compassion, seasoned with grace and truth. Raise up the next generation of leaders from this great city to be God-fearing men and women in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us this evening. Next, I'd like to ask the clerk to conduct a roll call, please. Mayor Bridget Peterson. Here. Vice Mayor Young Kaprowski. Here. Council Member Scott Anderson. Here. Council Member Lauren Hendricks. Present. Council Member Scott September. Council, Here. Council Member Kathy Tilkey. Here. And Council Member Amy Yenthes. Here. A quorum is present. The first thing on our agenda this evening is to present to our great Feeding Families organization. Gilbert Feeding Families was um, blessed by Fran Lauder and Just Serve coming together to help bring organizations together with Melanie Dykstra, one of our staff members, to do a food drive that happened just a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think it was. And Fran, would you like to come up and join me this evening? Amy Keller, come on up. Oh, great. So Fran and Amy, and I ran out and met with Fran on a Saturday afternoon to do the, oh, oh, there we are. We did some um, food packing into the big boxes at a couple of the churches, and these great young elders came out to help with that that afternoon. They were from Washington or, or Washington State. Yep. They were from Washington State, and they came out to help us that afternoon. And as you can see by the screen here, we had 24 donation sites with 61,000 pounds of food and over $12,000 in cash collected. This will provide 112,512 meals to those in need here in the town of Gilbert. I'm going to get my, oh, Dave's here. Is Dave Richens here? Oh, Dave Richards and Melissa oh Melissa, from United I can't States. see that far with these lights in my eyes. Do you want to come up and join us too, please? Come on. Dave Richens and Melissa from <laughs> United Food Bank are here with us this evening too. You know, it's the masks too. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. He, he knows. 
And now we'd like to invite one group down at a time. We'd like to congratulate them for this, their participation in this event. And we'd like to have the representatives from the Williamsfield Stake come down with us. Yeah, please. Thanks. Julie Benson is here from the Williamsfield Stake. Do we want to do separate photos? Yeah, that'd be great. If you want to hold your certificate, Julie, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hop in the middle here, Julie, right here. Right here. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for participating. Next up, we have the Val Vista Stake. Do you know who's here? Susan Mooney, come on down. I feel like I'm hosting a game show this evening. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, thank you. So nice to meet you, and thank you for your participation in this. Hop in here. Thank you, Julie. And next we have Resur Resurrection Episcopal Church. That's OK. We'll get his name. Come on down and give us your name. Excuse me? John Issett. John Issett. Thank you, John. Thanks for your help with this food drive. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the Higley steak. Representative Higley. Michelle Shirley coming down to join us from the Higley steak. I'll have it for you. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thanks for helping. And then we have the Highland West steak. Highland West is Robin. Robin. Robin Peterson. Peterson with an E or Peterson with an O? Oh, yeah. With an O. That's just like me. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, much. thank you. <laughs> Thanks for participating. Next, we have the Highland East Steak. That's the, Baileys. the Baileys will be joining us. Oh. <laughs> Fran said you're a power couple. <laughs> Who gets to hold this? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, here. You want to hold that? Sure. Perfect. I always try to get the microphone out of the way so it's not in the photos. <laughs> thank you. And the Gilbert YSA steak. Yes. And who do we have? Uh, Mar Marin Mooney. Marin Mooney? No. Oh, oh Monroe. Monroe. Monroe? Hi. Right <laughs> Come on, right here in the middle. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for participating. College age kids. Oh, do this. So thank this you. Really good. And the Greenfield steak. Do we have a representative from the Greenfield steak? Yep, Yay. There he, is. there he is. Matt Hamada. Matt Hamada. Hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for helping with this. Thank you. Have a great rest of your night. And then the Chandler East steak. And your name? Susan Martineau. Yes. Susan, Susan Martineau. Martineau. Thank you, yes. Susan. Oh, sure. Um, the Chalice Christian Church, the Central Christian Church. Desert Cross Lutheran Church, we had pictures done there, I think, isn't yes, that? We yep, did. we did. Yes, we did. Evident Life Church, I don't see anybody from Evident Life. The First United Methodist Church of Gilbert, the Gateway Stake, the Living Word Bible Church, the Mesa Boulder Creek, the Redeemer Church, Bible Church, excuse me, uh -huh. and the Seville Stake, the Stapley Stake, and Superstition Springs. We want to thank everybody. Um, um, oh, evident life. Evident oh, I said superstition springs. Oh, is, oh, she's here. She's here. Oh, she's here. We'll have to. 
Heather Ross. We don't have a. Oh, did we give you? We'll take a picture with a with a certificate. So. Okay. We'll get that sent out to you. We want to thank everybody that participated in this. We got to get together to do a little commercial before the event and had that put out, and that was a lot of fun. Thank you, Dave Richens. I appreciate everything that you do. Melissa, it's so nice to see you and everything that you do for United Food Bank and for the community of Gilbert. And again, Fran, for everything that you do. I know everything that you do for the town of Gilbert. I can't tell you how much we appreciate everything that you have your hands in, like literally have your hands in, <laughs> really. So thank you for all you do, and we appreciate You're you. To please know You're that. Welcome. And it was so nice to meet you, too. And yeah. Miss Amy Keller Amy, is going to be yeah. doing a lot of that, too. So. Oh, good. We look forward to next year's, and we'll do, we'll yeah, do more. We'll do it again. OK? Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Have a great night. Hey, my friend, nice to see you. Next up, we have recognition of the 2021 Sustainability Artwork winners, and that will be presented by Kelly Elliott from Environmental Compliance. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, so we do this high school artwork contest as a way to engage high school students and the public in our messaging, uh, this is a collaborative effort between environmental compliance, water conservation, and environmental services. So we, uh, we give them our slogans, or some kind of a slogan. We send this out to all of the high school students, and they compete to have their artwork put on the sides of our garbage trucks. So it's kind of fun. It spreads that message in their school and spreads that message out into the community. And they also get a nice Amazon gift card. So today, we're gonna recognize them for that. And we also thank the teachers. We have one teacher here tonight. The teachers that make it all possible, of course. And all of the students, we had 62 students participate in this. And now we have three winners. So we'll give them their prizes. So our first place winner you see up there is Jaden Oaken. She's here tonight. So she gets a copy of the sign that is on the side of the garbage truck, just a mini version for her to have and remember. Thank you. As well as her Amazon gift card, do not forget. <laughs> and then we have our second place winner, wasn't able to make it today, but that's uh, Caitlin here. And she did uh, the slogan for us, for my environmental compliance. So live the dream, keep it clean. I didn't say that one there. And then our third place winner is Lauren Jones. She's here with us tonight. So she did reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> so you might have seen we had our special visitors, the garbage trucks with the artwork on them here tonight. So take a look at that and look out for it in the community. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you to the students that participated in this. Your artwork is amazing. I'm jealous because I don't have a talent like that. And if anything, I would love to be able to draw or do something like that. And I appreciate you participating and obviously winning. Your designs are great. Thank you. Next, we have communications from citizens, and I will pass the baton to my vice mayor. Thank you, Mayor. The communications from citizens portion of the agenda provides our citizens an opportunity to identify for the town council matters of interest or concern related to town government that's not on the printed agenda. Under provisions of open meeting law, the town council is prohibited from responding to issues that have not been properly noticed. Therefore, we will be listening to your concerns and your comments, but we will not be able to respond beyond thanking you for your comments. 
um, or directing or asking staff to review a matter or having a matter put on a future agenda. When we call your name, you'll come forward to the podium, state your name and place of residence, and then begin speaking. You'll have two minutes to speak. All speakers are expected to observe common standards of decorum and courtesy. Um, we won't have um, any tolerance for personal attacks, political speeches, or threats. Please refrain from clapping, cheering, yelling, um, but we are listening and we appreciate you being here tonight. Our first speaker will be Charlie Gerard. The, this is to the mayor. I, I, just so you know, I, I did send you an email. I talked to your assistants on Thursday, so you have two videos of, of what I'm talking about. Okay, and she promised me there'd be a follow-up. So my name is uh, Charlie Gerard. I live in the Cottonwood Crossing subdivision. I will speak in reference to the Planning Commission meeting on April 7th regarding the Santana Adventure Parkway. It was a track that they're proposing 21 golf carts running in our neighborhood 15 to 16 hours a day, 365 days a year. The help needed from the town council, town council identify a sponsor to help our neighborhood neighborhood effort get a thorough noise study and, <clears throat> and conduct a traffic and parking study lot, okay? Background, a little bit about me. I retired from Intel after 31 years of service. I had 12 different jobs in 31 years. Five of those were managing um, engineering departments. If I came to a review board on a proposal with incomplete data and absence of critical constraint data as traffic and parking data, I would have been fired. I would have been fired. Okay, the level of incompetency, due to the level of incompetency, the fact of that's how Intel operates and hold decision makers accountable. So the facts are these. The Planning Commission made a vote of five to two to approve the design even after acknowledging the incompleteness of the noise study. That was the biggest issue for the neighborhood. Okay, the two commissioners voted no over concerns that the noise study was hypothetical. It had one go-kart, hypothetical noise. Okay, their guidance was to report the noise after it's all in, after it's all in. Okay, their guidance was to report the noise concerns as they happened, uh, indicating that multiple violations of town noise ordinance would result in violations and a termination of the lease and the town, uh, with the town and then taking over the parcel and capital improvements and so on. That was their word. So uh, what they told us was, um, go report the noise. Okay, this seems to be a dereliction of responsibility given the major portion of the design components. The major portion of the design components that they're responsible for approving were missing. Okay, and uh, they were, it, the, the noise study was incomplete. It basically, just like I said, it was, it was just a simulation study of a go-kart. Okay, the guidance of the Planning Commission makes no sense to the neighbors affected. We need to identify the following to the Planning Commission. A noise study, not an, ind an independent noise study, not one that works for the developer. Okay, it was sponsored by the developer, included one go kart. Please make your final okay. statement, Charlie. Okay, does not include... I'll be real quick. It does not include ambient noise. The mayor, you have two videos of ambient noise. Ambient noise is the killer for us. The sirens, the loudspeakers, the music, the crowd noise, none of that was done in this noise study. None of it. And it's going to be operating 15 to 16 hours a day, 365 days a year in our neighborhood. Okay. Um, please visit Sunsplash. Go visit Sunsplash and see what I mean. Okay, there was no traffic study done. Knox is a two-lane road, one direction for each way. The, the traffic will be circumvented through our neighborhoods. It, it's only human nature that you, that you avoid a constraint, and the traffic is going to be that constraint at the intersections. No parking study was done. If you drive by that parking lot, it's filled. There's no parking available. 
you know, and so the a petition was signed with 547 signatures at the time of the planning commission on April 7th. That was five days, over 500 signatures a day opposing this development. They heard everything that we're saying to you and they did not care. Okay, so the request is, and I know you can't comment, assign a, t assign a town council member to work with us on, on, on a comprehensive noise study based on a usage model including operational noise as loudspeakers, sirens, music, and crowd noise. That's the operational model of a go-kart. Go to Sunsplash and see for yourself. And that's what we're gonna hear 15 to 16 hours a day, eight to 11, eight to midnight, 365 days a year, and nobody cares. Thank okay. you, Charlie. And complete the traffic study and then report back to you guys. I'm done. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Sandra Avery. Pardon me? Our next speaker tonight will be Sandra Avery. Thank you for your comments, Charlie. Oh, you're sorry. I'm, my hearing isn't good. Did Thank you. you. Sure? Did you want your mask? I certainly did. Thank you. Hi there, I thought I had three minutes, so I'll just zoom through. Um, my name's Sandra Avery, and I also live in Cottonwood Crossing. And I'm here basically just to talk about things over the last couple of weeks, sort of about the Gilbert government that we've come across, and things that I think need to be changed. And first of all, is the noise ordinance. This noise ordinance is reading the decibel levels inside a home with your doors and windows closed. That's the way it is, not just for our neighborhood, but for Gilbert. So basically, you're saying if the noise is too loud outside, go inside, close your doors and your windows. And I think that we can kind of admit that in Arizona, that's sort of a stretch to kind of ask us to do that. The second thing is the, the lack of community notification of different changes that are going to happen. Every month we all get our utility bills. That would be a perfect opportunity to put in changes that are going on in the neighborhood that affect people. And I understand the Planning Commission probably wouldn't be really excited about that because it means that neighborhood opposition would probably start sooner rather than later. The lack of sharing information is a problem. Many of us have called and asked specific questions regarding zoning history, building on projects, zoning changes, history of RFB, RFPs, steps to be taken for different processes, et cetera. It seems on certain topics, either someone doesn't have the information, they don't want to share the information, or they don't know who has the information. These are simple things that we should be able to get answers to. Another thing that's almost unbelievable, but not quite, is the fact that tax-paying Gilbert residents have to pay $490 just to get the council to listen to us. That's the appeal fee. And then we have other fees on top of that. And the last thing is, I was here in 2005, 2006, and Mayor, I think you were on the council at that time. And anyway, they were trying to build a water park and polar ice <clears throat> out in that same place. And we got together and I was looking back through all my notes and emails and everything from that time. And I had so much communication from the planning commission, a lot of the council people, the mayor, Everybody parks and rec. It was so much email com communication back and forth and everybody really working together. And now what we've run into, and I understand things and processes and ways of doing things just seem to change, although nobody can tell me when those changes happened. But now it just seems that there's so much concern about interpersonal, business, financial, whatever relationships that we just kind of get pushed to this person and that person and nobody's really held accountable. And I just think that it's really sad that 
just looking out for neighborhoods and people, just because it's the right thing to do, just seems to have sort of become irrelevant. And it goes for these eminent domain people, too. It's just nice, just being nice. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Our next speaker tonight will be Randy Nelson. I'm Randy Nelson. I'm at 1324 South Portland Avenue. Uh, exactly 250 feet from my back bedroom window will be a go-kart track. And I am appealing this decision uh, through the regular uh, uh, avenue through the Planning Commission, etc. But tonight, I am here to complain. With the show of hands, how many of you would like a go-kart track built for 21 gasoline powered go-karts 250 feet from their bedroom window. Same number that would like it at the Planning Commission. Yet I have one coming to my house. So why would all those people vote to put a 15 hour a day go-kart track close enough to me as to make my backyard completely unusable? This was our, to be our forever home and now I can never open a window on a spring morning. Think of that. The town council, the previous one, I realize I'm talking to different people, but you can overturn this, this abomination of an idea. I'll never be able to open my windows before 11 p.m. on weeknights and 12 midnight on weekends. A go-kart track will likely control when I am able to sleep. How did all those people think this was okay? How did the, just how did this happen? Think of the impact on the quality of life without a thought of what was thrown away for me by all of those people. And again, you can overturn that lease and make that mistake right. I went to a neighborhood meeting in 2016, I'm gonna be quick now, and was personally escorted by Ben Cooper as they presented what turned out to be not exactly the picture of what we were presented with a couple weeks or a few weeks ago. My concerns specifically were light and noise and was assured that go-karts were not on the agenda at that time. I remember nothing being said of 34 pre-approved uses, something I would have remembered since I was there specifically about noise and light pollution. Ben. Uh, will only answer us by phone now since nothing goes in writing. That sounds like a good neighbor to me. Did a single council person go to Golfland to see the noise levels that will haunt our neighborhood prior to approval of this project? They use the very same engines. Did anyone even look on YouTube as to make noise levels that these parks create? Did anyone look to see if a family fun center had ever been placed between two neighborhoods and a dog park? The answer is obviously no, a lapse in clear moral thinking, in my opinion. We have many questions on how this happened since we made the mistake of not having a councilman step down and follow this project through the maze of meetings that a layman could never find. How did a councilman resign only to resurface as the spokesman and an investor at a company that miraculously won the RFP? Just who and how did this idea of a circus next to housing think this was a good idea when 111 cities in six southwestern states have said no 150 times? We said yes. 111 cities did not allow this. There is not another project like this in Texas, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California. We're gonna have it here. How did that happen? We will, Please make your final statement. The fact that Castle Golf, uh, well, it, it's a morally questionable trail for a layman to follow. We'll find out whether it be by investigative reporters that we're talking to by any other means. The fact that Castle Golf and the Thorntons knew exactly what this park with go-karts would do to a neighborhood, yet went ahead is an absolute destruction of the quality of life. 
Why not at the regional park? 111 towns said no. What kind of morality inflicts this on residents? At what kind of town council lets it happen without a thought of protecting residents from a complete destruction of their quality of life? I want to see this lease turned over due to the irreparable damage that it will do to two neighborhoods and especially one really fine dog park. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Nikki Reber. I'm Nikki Reber. I live at 1138 South Wanda Drive. I'm on the tail end of Cottonwood Crossings. I am not part of that HOA, but I consider that my neighborhood. I watched them build those houses 27 years ago. I watched all those neighborhoods be built. I have a nice little property out there. It's two acres. It's a horse property with a nice custom-built home on it. It's my retirement. It's my ability to get into a decent care home when I can't take care of myself anymore. I was just informed this morning that my property, if this goes through, will now be worth at least $100,000 less than what it was appraised for one week ago when the appraiser didn't know that this was going on. This is simply not fair to any of us. I'm not the only one who will lose money on my home. Everybody out there, nobody's going to want to live next to this stuff. So we all are in a real mess. If it goes through, one of the first things I'll do next year is get the value of my property reduced. That'll hurt your tax line. Thanks. Our next speaker will be Leslie Novak. Hello, my name is Leslie Novak. I live at 215 East Hemlock. My concern is the uh, WW1060 project, the sewer line that is going to be going in. So um, during the last council meeting, I witnessed this council discuss at length as to whether or not to include gender affirming benefits to its current plans. And as I remember, the discussion between the council members was lengthy as to whether this was a cost, a cost effective is decision as no current employee may, had made inquiries about it. An HR representative was invited to speak and said no, we have no current employees who are requesting this type of um, benefit. So my question is wh why would a future applicant be more important than the 24 residents that are going to be affected by the land grab that this council has approved. What I witnessed was a very interesting discussion. Thank you for that. It was very interesting. But perhaps you, Mayor Peterson, or any other of the council members present can explain why a future applicant and a procedure costing roughly $100,000 got more of this council's attention, consideration, and discussion than a decision to land grab property from the 24 property owners, long-term residents, at the cost of millions of dollars. Is it perhaps that this council is, is more concerned with you at its head, Mayor Peterson, is more interested in being viewed as socially forward than fiscally responsible. I am personally offended that some future applicant got more of your attention, discussion, and consideration than I did. I found that very insulting, but thank you for that. I appreciate your time. Our next speaker is Nolan Baldwin. Hi, 
My name's Ron Kuhn. Um, Nolan Baldwin, we put his name in, hoping that he, he was going to show, but he had some uh, issues, so he didn't show up quite as soon, so I'm kind of taking his place. Um, I'm, I'm uh, talking about the 1060 um, project, about that sewer going on the back of our properties of that 24 homes. Um, just to kind of give you an update, we do have a website, gilbertwastingtaxes.com, if you want to go on that website. Um, anyway, we're <clears throat> we have some good things and bad things. Um, one of the things is this, this, the, the town is working with uh, Jason. Whenever Greg, uh, one of us, uh, call him, he answers the phone, he talks to him. And so uh, we do feel encouraged that, this, that the town is, is, is uh, listening to us. And hopefully uh, we do have some different options. And we, we, we just have the hope that, uh, that uh, the city will uh, um, sit down and with us and, and look at these different options and, and uh, hopefully that we will not uh, get our, our land taken away. So I do want to mention that, and I, I, I do feel encouraged that uh, we can get this worked out. So thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our communications from citizens, and we'll move on to the consent calendar. We will be pulling, pulling items 8 and 13 for discussion and voting separately. May I have a motion to approve consent calendar items 3, 3A, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11. So moved. Second. Please vote. That motion carries. Council Member Yentes, would you like to discuss item eight, please? Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I more just have a question, and maybe this question's for Patrick, but is there an opportunity with the second round of COVID relief monies to apply that to this line item? Uh, Mayor, Council Member Yentes, yes, and in fact, we were just talking about that yesterday, and we'll bring this forward for council consideration. Perfect, thank you. Move to approve. Second. Please vote. Mayor. Please vote. Mayor, I'm not clear on the vote. Excuse me? Well, I'm not clear on the on what the vote was for. I don't want to vote until I know. I, 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 is it, are we voting for item eight to approve or reject it? To approve. Council Member Yentes just motioned to approve it. She motioned. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. That motion passes. Mayor Peterson, that concludes the consent calendar. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Hmm? Oh, it's public hearing. Yeah, that's. I just leaned over to the Vice Mayor to say that. Um, now we'll move into our public hearing portion of our agenda. I will go ahead and open the public hearing. Does anybody want to hear anything about item 12, or can we take a motion on that item and then move to the discussion on 13? I make a motion. Somebody, please. Thank you. Close the public hearing on item 12. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve item 12. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Tilke, seconded by Vice Mayor Kurprowski. Please vote. Motion passes 7 0. Now we'll move on to item number 13. Councilmember Yentes, did you have some questions on that? Uh, not uh, really questions, more comments. Um, I think I've made my position clear on these federal monies. Obviously, CDBG funds are um, a small but contributor to, to federal debt. Um, no one drop thinks they're responsible for the flood. Um, obviously, Gilbert is much more responsible than most cities, but um, with a $27 trillion debt, 99% um, of our GDP, I, I, I um, take more of a philosophic position on this. Um, to that uh, point as well, um, I, I believe these monies, which obviously go to worthy causes, nonprofits that support um, people who have needs in our community, I, I do believe um, this function as a government crowds out private giving, um, which ultimately is, is not as beneficial. And then lastly, I, I did see within the plan that um, our intention is to purchase another unit for um, low-income housing. Don't really think Gilbert should be in the business of, of buying and managing these properties um, or, or in this subsidization game. So um, for that reason, I, I would request to vote separately. 
Thank you, Council Member Yentes. Any questions, comments, or are we ready for a motion? Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Council Member Tilke, seconded by Vice Mayor Kaprowski. Please vote. Motion passes five to two. Now we'll move into our administrative items on the agenda, risk management to consider acceptance of the risk management quarterly report. I don't think we're prepared to have a uh, presentation, just um, a motion for this. Or Oh, it's administrative, so we don't even need a motion. That's right, thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments for staff? No? Seeing none, we'll move on to boards, commissions, and committees. Any reports? Mayor, sorry, uh, Mayor yeah, Peterson. Yeah. Can we get a motion to accept it? Oh, it's yes. not administrative, it's not so administrative, I didn't think we but, needed it. But okay. it should be accepted. Yeah. Okay, would anybody like to make a Thank motion, you. please? So moved. Second. I have a, oh, a motion by the by Scott Anderson, <laughs> Councilmember Anderson, and second by Councilmember September. Caught me off guard, the two Scots. Um, please vote. And motion passes 7-0. Now we'll move on to boards, commissions, and committees reports from council liaisons. Do we have anything to report this evening? Yes, Vice Mayor. I'd like to provide some information from the Citizens Transportation Task Force regarding the potential transportation and infrastructure bond. We will be having informational meetings um, held in April and May for the transportation bond. The first will be virtual. Um, April 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. The other two will be in person um, May 12th at the Southeast Regional Library and the following week, the following Thursday at the Public Safety Training Facility. These will be informational only. They'll be the same information at, at each one, so you can select which one you want to attend, um, but that'll give you a good preview for what is being proposed or potentially brought forth in the 2021 transportation and infrastructure bond. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Any other comments? Anything to share? So we'll move on to communications and report from our town manager. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the council, I wanted to share with you some a great accomplishment by the Gilbert Parks and Recreation Special Olympics cheer team which competed in the virtual statewide Special Olympics cheer competition last Friday the 16th. We had eight athletes, three who were new to the team, and this year we competed in the traditional intermediate category. This means we did not have any typical volunteers competing on the team with the athletes as we have done in the past. The athletes were required to perform a cheer, chat, and a dance routine. They memorized the entire routine with help of their amazing coaches, Michelle Dulansky and Jennifer Myers. And this year with the competition being held virtual, we were asked to submit a video of their performance and after the judging, they received the gold medal in their category. And we're very proud of this team and always enjoy um, watching their performances and cheering them on in their competitions. I'll forward each of you a video of the competition and we'll make sure and post that to our website, but very proud of the Gilbert All Abilities Cheer Squad. That's awesome. I, I love every year when they would come and visit a council meeting and we would get to see them perform here in the council chambers. So that's awesome. Thank you for forwarding that to us. Can, Anyone, we, can, we, can we get that again? That was awesome. To have, that was awesome. When, when we had them come. I, I don't know can, if because... Is that possible, Patrick? Mayor, Council Mayor Anderson, uh, maybe this fall um, okay. we could find a time to have them come in person. I know yeah. they enjoy it as well. Oh, that was awesome. Yes, it I agree. Awesome. Yeah, it, it is awesome and awesome opportunity for them to come and show off a little bit of what they do. So any report from Council on Current Events? I see none. Uh, report from the mayor this week is National Volunteer Week, and this community wouldn't be able to function without the volunteers that we have that serve on boards, commissions, committees, task force, our police department, our fire department. Uh, I know that a lot of things look different for the past year, and a lot of those volunteers haven't been able to do what they have typically done in the past for us, but I know that they are all chomping at the bit to get back in here and to be able to do the work that they do for this community. And we sent them out an email yesterday to thank them for all of their service to this community. And I just wanted to say it again here tonight. So thank you all for everything that you do and continue making Gilbert a great community to live in. And I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you.